Hey everybody, welcome to game time. Uh, so today I'm going to teach you how to play a, a, a version of backgammon. Uh, it's called Mahbusa, and um, it's a variant of classic backgammon, one of the oldest games in the world. And um, it's similar to, um, there's, a, there's a string of versions of this game that are kind of played in the Mediterranean area and the Middle East. Um, Plakoto is uh, a Greek version. Probably not saying that right, but it's um, it's a, a Greek variant of backgammon. Um, there's also Makbusa, which I'll show you today. Um, tapa, uh, Sheshbesh. These are different variants from from this kind of geological or geographical area of the world, um, <clears throat> and it's kind of a it's kind of a, a nice change from the classic backgammon where you know you start with all the pieces being kind of set up. And things like that. Um, I've been playing for I've been playing backgammon uh, for probably the last I don't know eight years or something like that. My uh, my partner taught me how to play um, the classic version um, because you know we found a set at a thrift store, um, and uh, her grandparents used to play every night after dinner, um, and so we kind of worked that into our own tradition and have really been playing every night before bed, we play at least a game or two. Um, so, but the thing with backgammon is that it often, it, it started getting to the point where because all of the pieces were set up in these prearranged um, uh, forms, uh, that the move started to feel really predictable. And it got kind of boring because we knew you know, there wasn't any kind of variation in uh, how the game would turn out. And obviously, you know, when you're talking about dice rolls, you've got a random element in there. Um, but it wasn't really enough for us. So we got to the point where we were starting to, you know, we would put all the pieces in the board and close the board and shake it up and set it down. And then wherever the pieces kind of fell, that's where we would set them up. Uh, and then our friend, uh, ben taught us this new version called Makbusa, and Ben lived in Syria for a number of years, and he said, oh yeah, this game, like this version of the game is really great, and if you go to like Damascus, you'll see um, uh, game tables set up in the park, very similar to the way people play chess in Central Park, where, you know, you've got the chess board and there's just a bunch of, you know, a string of, you know, old guys playing chess and they've got the little clock and everything like that. And he said it's exactly the same in Damascus, but with Makbusa. And, um, uh, you know, and he said it's just, the, you know, they'll have the hookah and they're like throwing the dice and they're yelling and they're being boisterous. And it's, it just sounded like a really beautiful picture. So he showed us how to play this game. And I'm going to show you how to play it today. So in order to do that, I'm going to just tilt the camera down. Uh, that should be good. Okay. So um, there is the straight up traditional version of the game. Um, I'm going to teach you how my partner and I play it which includes some kind of American versions or, or um, you know, we play with, like, we do AC Deuce, for example. So if you're not familiar with, um, with traditional backgammon, um, excuse me, um, <clears throat> AC Deuce, you know, um, allows you to take, uh, do whatever doubles you want, basically, and then you get to go again. Um, that's not necessarily a thing in, like, the traditional Middle Eastern version of the game, but that, that's kind of how we play. So obviously with, you know, with any of these, there are some rules that you can kind of tweak. We kind of have house rules too. Like for example, in, um, in sort of the traditional game of backgammon, um, if you take your hand off of a piece, you can still decide to take it back as long as it's before the other person rolls for their turn. The way that my partner and I play is if you take your hand off of it, it's there and you can't, you can't take it back. So, um, so there are things like that that you can kind of throw in uh, to make it, kind of make it your own, um, however you see fit. 
So the way that we start off, and I'm gonna try to play both sides. So this will be a little bit interesting. So um, uh, basically the way that you start off is, you know, each person rolls one dice. Oh, just, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, there we go. Okay, so uh, five and two. Now I'm gonna play as if like white is my color because when she and I play, I'm usually white and she plays black. That's her favorite color. So, um, so five and two, this means that, uh, that as with backgammon, my first move now can be five and two. So I am probably going to, uh, because it's early in the game, I'm going to put my pieces here. So you start off again, as, as you can see, you start off with a totally empty board and then you basically move play you move pieces onto the board as you as you roll so that was my turn now uh let's see now we're gonna roll for whoa now we're gonna roll for red oh look at that ac deuce so i'm probably gonna go let's see um one two three Four. Now, this is the big difference between Mahbusa and traditional backgammon. In traditional backgammon, when you land on a piece that's like, you know, exposed like that, normally you would take the piece and put it in jail. Um, however, with Mahbusa, uh, my understanding is that the word Mahbusa means imprisoned. So basically, what, how that came about is because of this. So basically this piece here, the red one, blocks this piece um, and I can just continue to roll players around and, and or roll pieces around and basically just stack them on top. So this piece is blocked until I move off of it and then it can move again. Um, so let's see, so that was one, two, three, four. Okay, so now I get to roll again. Double fives, okay. So, probably gonna do one, two, three, four, uh, no, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna double up here. This is interesting playing against myself. Okay, so that was, that was red. So, because these are, because these, Cups are plastic. I'm just going to set them aside because they're really loud. So now, let's see. Uh, five and four. So probably going to do four and five. And now it's Red's turn. Four and one. Okay, so just keep stacking. And the great thing about this is that every, every game is different six and one. Okay, so I'm gonna move that there. Um, every game is different. And we've actually started keeping track of, uh, of scores. We've played well over a thousand games <clears throat> since we started playing eight years ago. Um, um, we have a little travel set that we bring with us. Um, you know, we, we, anytime we find them in thrift stores, we try to snap them up because they're, they're great gifts. You know, we've had some really great connection time playing backgammon, um, and just togetherness. And, you know, at the end of a busy day, I mean, obviously post pandemic now we're, you know, we're together every day cause I work from home. Um, but it's, it's just, it's a really great time. You know, we can talk or we don't have to talk. Um, but it's just, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, so the way that we kind of do scoring is um, there, I'll just take a pause here to kind of explain uh, how we kind of do kind of the um, uh, macro scoring, if you will. Um, so if, um, obviously, if, if at the end of the game, and, and real quick, if you're not familiar with backgammon in general, um, <clears throat> the goal is for my pieces to start here and make it this way around the board and get here. 
and it's the opposite for red, I want to start here and go this way around the board to stack them up here. Um, this type of game is called a race game, by the way, um, because you're racing each other around, around the board. So if, uh, you know, red gets all their pieces in here and I've got a few, at least one piece here, um, but, uh, but, but red wins, then we just call that a win. If red gets all their pieces in here and I don't have any of my pieces in my, um, uh, uh, you know, rolled off, that's, we, we call that a skunk. And I think that's fairly common for backgammon in general. Um, if, um, you know, if, for example, on my first roll, I placed a piece here in the one, the, the one square, and then, you know, the, my opponent or my partner uh, rolled, you know, an, uh, double sixes or an AC deuce, well, they could just block me here. And if they block me here, there's no way that I'm going to win. Um, there's no way that I'm going to be not skunked. Um, uh, I suppose there is one possible way that I could be not skunked, but I'm definitely not going to win. So we basically call that like an automatic win. We call them luckies. So we have um, wins, luckies, um, skunks, and then uh, we do a tie as well. So, you know, if it comes down to it and there are two pieces here and two pieces here, you know, whoever, which, whichever one of us like rolls off first, if the other person is able to get all the, the remainder of their pieces in, then we call that a tie. And we'll, we'll have, uh, you know, whoever, um, whoever uh, was the first one to put the last of their pieces in, we just say that it's a, you know, a Graham tie. My name is Graham. So we call it a Graham tie or a Katie tie. Um, so that's kind of how we have the scoring set up. Um, and uh, yeah, it's fun. It's really fun to kind of watch like the trends in like who wins, you know, who wins more often. Um, and it really kind of ebbs and flows because, you know, she and I are very equally matched. And so, yeah, it's, it's fun to watch. So anyway, let's keep playing. So, um, oh, uh, geez, another AC deuce. That's awesome. Um, okay, so if I do, okay. So let's see, 6, 12, 13. Okay, so um, let me think. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. Now, obviously, I've got one set here, but I can go ahead. And, okay, so I've got double twos. So one, two, three, four. Boy. I am glad that I'm not playing against myself more regularly. Um, <clears throat> all right, five and one. Oof. That is rough. Means the only thing that I can do is that. Um, all right. Um, okay, I'm going to be... Uh, brutal here and I'm going to just kind of decimate myself here. All right. So three and two, obviously I don't want to put more pieces here because the likelihood is that they're going to get blocked as well. So I'll just do three and two. Six and four, so we'll do six and four. <clears throat> oh, this is awful. Five and one. Okay. <laughs> Three, one, two, three. So basically, that's a uh, that's a, a, a well. At this point, we, we'd call call it a lucky. So 
The difference between a lucky and a skunk is that if we don't have all of our pieces out, the, the way that this is, and granted, again, we've kind of defined our own like uh, rules and definitions for this, but if all of the, um, if both players have all of their pieces out on the board um, and this happens, that is, we call that uh, uh, a skunk. But if there are still pieces here in the tray waiting to go out onto the board, then we call that a lucky. Um, so that is basically how that works. Um, uh, so I guess one other thing that I didn't really show here um, is that like, let's say that I rolled, uh, um, well, let's see, actually, so it looks like I still have, uh, I only did uh, two threes, so I can do one, two, three, and one, two, three. So basically you can stack pieces up like this. And then, and it, I mean, it can get really ridiculous where, you know, you've got like, you know, like you can, there's, there's no real, you know, like limit to how you can, how you can stack. I suppose the only limit is how many pieces you have. Um, but yeah, so it's a super fun game um, and uh, definitely check it out. Um, if you've, uh, if you've never played that version before, let me know, leave a comment, um, you know, try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, if you have questions, you know, feel free to drop those down there as well. And, uh, you know, if you've played Mahbusa before or, you know, Sheshbesh or any of these other types of, of variants, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, I hope you have a great time and uh, enjoy. We'll see you later.